Hey everyone, I'm Steven. And I'm Megan, and we're the Board Game Weekenders. And these are our top 10 games of 2020. Our number 10 game is Mary Posas. In this game, you're going to be moving your monarch butterflies from Mexico up through North America, collecting flower tokens as you go, reproducing your butterflies, landing on the cities to collect these way station tokens. Your goal each season is also to meet the scoring requirement to score you points based upon where you're on on the map. At the end of the game, your goal is to get as many butterflies as you can back down to Mexico to score you the maximum amount of points. Yeah, this game has worked really well for us because I think it's easy to pick up because you only have two cards to pick on your turn. You just pick one and play. It's easy. Um, it's fun that each game there's different goals for each of the seasons. So you're trying to get your butterflies in different positions and just kind of puzzling out how to best um, allocate them to get you the maximum number of points. Um, so this one has been a good one. Again, that's our number 10 game, Mary Posas. Our number 9 game of 2020 is Coatl. In Coatl, you're trying to build the best feathered snake to please the Aztec gods. You'll be drafting pieces from this board and then building a Coatl using prophecy cards you're trying to score. So you might need a green piece next to a black piece to try to get a maximum number of points. There are also temple cards to which you're also trying to kind of help you score by having, again, your pieces in certain orientations. We really like this game because it's very simple. The pieces are nice and chunky. Uh, they, they fit together real nicely. They're just flat out fun to build. Um, and it's really interesting to get these um, scoring cards where you have to match this certain pattern and, and try to, it's very thinky, but very simple at the same time. Mm -hmm. Kind of feels like a Zool to some degree yeah, to me. Yeah. Like that kind of level weight, and that's good for a nice half hour game. Yeah. Our number eight game is Fossilus. In this game, you're moving your paleontologist around an excavation site, digging tiles to get you resources that allow you to buy tools and supplies to help you on your journey. Um, you're also going to be extracting dinosaur bones that you will be revealing when you take off the tiles when you dig them. Uh, you can then use these bones to claim a dinosaur. So each dinosaur has specific bones assigned to them. You can either fully complete a dinosaur or halfway complete a dinosaur for points. And then they give you a bunch of different endgame scoring at the end of the game. Yeah, I mean, it's not surprising. And the most fun part about this is actually using the <laughs> tweezers to get the bones. It seems ridiculous, but it's just really fun and clever to peek in there and see. It's always a surprise when you reveal one and you're really looking for a yeah. certain bone. And, and sometimes it's actually kind of hard to find a certain one. And this tray is really well engineered. How it slides around is like a whole game in of itself. Um, besides that, I also really like um, that you can acquire these special kind of powers as well throughout the game that give you uh, kind of a different ability that the other players don't have. And the artwork and just like the look of everything is good and this is just kind of a solid you know 45 yeah. minute to an hour game it's just flat out fun <laughs> our number seven game of 2020 is boomerang in boomerang it's a drafting game where you'll have a hand of cards and you're going to pass them and take one to visit different tourist sites see different animals and collect things along your journey in one of the different regions of whichever again boomerang version you pick um, and then you'll be marking down at the end of the round each of the locations you visit to get points, each of, again, the different uh, attractions and places that you visited um, to try to get the highest score that you possibly can throughout the game. I love this game because it's kind of a twist on the classic roll and rights. You're no longer rolling, you're, you know, drafting cards, which is a very interesting concept. Um, the artwork is amazing. I love that there's three different variations. Um, you know, so each game has about half the rules are the same, mm -hmm. half are different. So it's easy to pick up and learn, especially if you're new at it. Or, But it also adds something different to yeah. do to make it a little bit more I like, interesting. I like, too, how each card you're kind of thinking about a couple different things. It's not just one thing on the card. Yeah. It's like four different things that you're right. kind of debating about what to pick it for. Right. So. And it's cool. small, easy yeah, to pack and take along sure. places. It's great. Yep. Our number six game is Gods Love Dinosaurs. In this game, you're building an ecosystem full of a sustainable food chain of predators and prey. On your turn, you select a terrain tile and add it to your ecosystem. You then get the matching animal meeple. 
Then once a column is cleared of tiles, that certain animal triggers and they each do different things. The prey multiply, the predators eat the prey. Occasionally the dinosaur is triggered in which he tromps around and eats all the animals, as many as he can. Ideally you want him to eat the predators in order to score you eggs, which are points. This game's really fun because there's a lot of tension over like what tile people are going to pick because you really might need a specific predator or prey or you might want just that column to activate so you can like have a lot more prey and expand um, and also it's kind of also puzzling out where you want your dinosaur to move. It's kind of like a puzzly movement game combined with that as well. Um, it's also easy to teach. It seems like everyone mm -hmm. we teach it to it kind of just picks up on it real quick and it's just kind of an enjoyable game for everyone that we found. So this has been another good one. Our number five of 2020 is Cloud City. In this game, you're an architect trying to city plan to get the most city council votes by the end of the game, or victory points. Um, on your turn, you're selecting a tile from your hand. You're going to lay it down in your city, and then you're going to place those corresponding buildings to place links that have point values on it that will score you points at the end of the game. There's also a variant where you can have a certain objective that can also get you some extra points as you're kind of building throughout the game. This game is great in its um, simplicity, but it's also almost a dexterity game. It's really hard to place yeah, these, really especially is. when you're placing like underneath things. Mm -hmm. I've knocked it over many a times, um, but it's very simple, puzzly. Um, you know, this variant adds, you know, a little bit more of like a gamer aspect mm -hmm. to it, but taking it away, it's a very good family game that you could pretty much teach to anybody who has an interest in playing a game. Yeah, it seems short and light, but also there's planning involved. Like yeah. you can plan, I'm going to build this browning building here, and then this mm -hmm. ramp's going to go underneath that one. Yeah. And like, it, it's a little, it's very puzzling. It's very like abstract said. thinking, yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a 3D spatial, interesting way you have to look at it. Mm hmm our number four game is Dwellings of Eldervale. In this game, you'll be exploring the realms of Eldervale. On your turn, you're placing out one of your workers onto a realm and doing the action on the tile. This could consist of getting resources, buying these adventure cards, fighting the monsters, fighting your opponent, or building out dwellings uh, that will get you points at the end of the game. Uh, building dwellings lets you move up on the elemental scoring track, which then corresponds to your end game points. You get points corresponding to where you are in the different elements where you have dwellings and you have accumulated adventure cards for. Yeah, it seems like this game should be like super complicated, but it's really not when you boil it yeah. down. Like you're just putting a worker out. And one thing I really like about this game is when you uh, return all of your workers to your pool, you have these special cards that, that you can then assign them to to get extra things, even on those turns when you're pulling your workers back. So it's kind of a neat twist on worker placement that way. Also, I like that each of the factions has different abilities, so it feels a little bit different for each one that you're using. You play a little bit differently. And then there are these spell cards, which have special actions during the game. Some of these are like end game scoring things that are like secret objectives and I always kind of like when those things are thrown in the games. Combined with the amazing components and game trays just right. make this like a really cool package. Agreed. So this is uh, again just another great one that we found. All right, our number three game of 2020 is Whistle Mountain. In Whistle Mountain, you'll be developing the Rocky Mountains. New technologies building up in this valley with scaffolding machines. By placing out your airships and blimps onto the outside of the board to these docks to get new machines and scaffolding and upgrades that give you abilities on your turn. And then you will also be placing your airship onto the board to get resources that you're next to, to activate machines that you're next to with your airships. So it's very uh, puzzly in nature. And then at the end of the game, you're trying to make sure that your workers are safe uh, and not falling into the whirlpool with the rising water cup coming. This game is just super unique. Um, it looks really overwhelming at first. There's a lot of different components, but it's actually fairly simple. Um, so basically building the scaffolding you can get different worker placements, which are the actual machines. So it really mm -hmm. changes it up game to game how you're playing. Um, and then this water aspect is very interesting where, um, you know, worker placement that you might have placed out at the beginning of the game that you've been using a lot will eventually get covered mm -hmm. up and no longer be available. And each game you get a starting player 
uh, ability, which really kind of leads you in and gives you something extra you can do over your opponent, which is really interesting. And these upgrades that you can get, um, that you can choose which ones you'd like to get you by them, um, really help di diversify your game and, and make it different than what your partner is playing. Yeah, really the strength here is just the sheer variety. From game to game, you're just going to see a bunch of different things. So it's just kind of this ever-evolving puzzle of a game. My city. Our number two of 2020 is My City. In My City, this is a tile placement game where you're going to be flipping over a card and then placing that specific building into your city. The interesting thing about My City is this game is a legacy game where there are eight chapters, each with three episodes in them, kind of ever evolving or changing the gameplay as you go. Now what's also interesting is there's a mode where that you can play that is not legacy so you can just keep playing it over and over and over again. I really like this game. I love the polyomino Tetrisy tiling games mm -hmm. as they are but I really like the legacy game since we can play together and it's ever growing mm -hmm. but I love that since we have fallen in love with it playing the legacy game that when we're done with it we can just go ahead and play the base yeah. game and it'll forever be part of our repertoire that we can always pull out and play quickly. Yeah, the thing I like about this one is it's like a bite-sized legacy game. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't have to remember 80 zillion rules. It's just like yeah. one extra thing each yep. kind of chapter, which makes it kind of nice and digestible, yeah. I yeah. guess you could say. And our number one game of 2020 is <laughs> Calico. And I promise it's not just because our cat looks exactly like the one on the cover. Calico is this wonderful game where you are trying to build the best quilt to attract the cats to come lay on your quilt. So it's tiling, where basically you have a hand of two tiles, where on your turn, all you do is just place a tile onto your quilt and then pick up another one from the three face up and then replenish. Uh, the way you score is that you are trying to fulfill these scoring tiles. So mm -hmm. the A, B, C, D refers to patterns, and that also refers to the colors surrounding them as well as the pattern on the actual tile. Uh, the other way you can score is by attracting the cats. So for instance, Tidbit wants to have four of the stripes all touching one another. The other way is you can get buttons by getting three of the same color touching each other in which you would get a colored button. Yep, so we really like, this is by far the game we played yeah. the most this year. It's not even close. Um, and that's partly I think because of the time length and it's just so replayable. There's just something so pleasant about it and puzzly. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it just, it just keeps coming back to the table yeah. for whatever reason. Um, it's also one that's easy to teach people to. Right. I mean, and you have two tiles, you play one yeah. and putting those down makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So. And theme is on point <laughs> since we have a orange cat that looks exactly like the cat on the box of Calico. <laughs> okay, everyone. So those are our top 10 games of 2020. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.